looking at those great works of Western man and remembering all that he's achieved in philosophy, poetry, science, lawmaking, it does seem hard to believe that European civilization can ever vanish. What is civilization? I don't know. I can't define it in abstract terms yet. But I think I can recognize it when I see it, and I'm looking at it now. My favorite types of architecture are Hindu temples, Roman temples, and Gothic churches. The term Gothic was originally applied as a pejorative in Italy because the work was associated with the Germanic barbarians of the north who invented it. Giorgio Vasari used the term barbarous German style in his 1550 Lives of the Artists to describe it. Gothic architecture began in 12th century France, but spread quickly, diversifying across Europe into regional forms. To me, English Gothic is the perfect architectural expression of the Germanic soul. It is superior to the plain simplicity of classical architecture. This was the first time the northern people had the opportunity to build enormous stone structures and they seem to have emulated the ancient forests of the north, which were our holy sites before Christian times. The ribbing and the vaulted ceilings and buttresses all remind me of trees and forests, and the rose windows are clearly based on flowers. The northern soul expresses itself through the replication of the perfect forms found in nature. John Ruskin the Victorian art critic and proponent of Gothic revival, wrote, An architect should live as little in cities as a painter. Send him to our hills and let him study there what nature understands by a buttress and what by a dome. Nature is painting for us. Day after day, pictures of infinite beauty, if only we have the eyes to see them. It is perhaps the principal admirableness of the Gothic schools of architecture, that they received the results of the labour of inferior minds and out of fragments full of imperfection raise up a stately and unaccusable whole. In one point of view, Gothic is not only the best, but the only rational architecture, as being that which can fit itself most easily to all services, vulgar or noble. I believe that the characteristic or moral elements of Gothic are the following, placed in the order of their importance. 1. Savageness. 2. Changefulness. 3. Naturalism. 4. Grotesqueness. 5. Rigidity. and 6. Redundance. Architecture is the art which so disposes and adorns the edifices raised by man that the sight of them may contribute to his mental health, power and pleasure. When we build, let it not be for present delights nor for present use alone. Let it be such work as our descendants will thank us for, and let us think that a time is to come when these stones will be held sacred because our hands have touched them, and that men will say as they look upon the labour and the wrought substances of them, See, this our fathers did for us. The idea of self-denial for the sake of posterity, or practicing present economy for the sake of debtors yet unborn, of planting forests that our descendants may live under their shade, never, I suppose, officially takes place among publicly recognized motives of exertion. Yet these are not the less our duties nor is our part fitly sustained upon the earth, unless the range of our intended and deliberate usefulness include not only the companions, but the successors of our pilgrimage. God has lent us the earth for our life. It is a great entail. It belongs as much to those who are to come after us as to us. We have no right, by anything that we do or neglect, to involve them in unnecessary penalties or deprive them of benefits which it was in our power to bequeath.